What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to yet another video. So today we're gonna address a problem I've been having recently with the F10. So around Black Friday, I ordered a ton of parts for my car and of which I ended up ordering a set of valved mufflers for my car. And upon arrival, I just wanted to kind of uh, loosely hook the system up and just make sure that the valves were opening and closing before I pay to have them welded in and find out that they don't even work. And the system I ended up going with plugs into a 12 volt socket as opposed to having to be hardwired into like some wire in the car and i realized when i tried to do that that the vacuum pump was not getting power none of my 12 volt uh sockets were getting any power at all and so i figured it'd make for a pretty cool video where i kind of go over the diagnostic steps that i took to be able to resolve the issue um this video is pretty DIY beginner friendly. These circuits are not complicated at all. I'm definitely not going over like some complicated networking circuit on this car. Um, power, like 12 volt socket circuits. Problems are typically only like one of two things. Either usually a fuse is blown somewhere or it's not plugged in at the socket. And so anyways, I figured I'd show you guys the steps that I uh, take to be able to fix the issue and at the end give you a little sneak peek of the mufflers and the valves opening and closing assuming I fixed the problem and give you guys an idea for what's coming up for the F10 so let's get into it alrighty so we're in the car like I said uh, a second ago 12 volt socket circuits are pretty simple usually it's just battery voltage in to ground completes the circuit and you have power at the socket um, I want to show you guys what's going on uh, and really quick explain the tool that I'm going to use. This right here is a test light, a 12 volt circuit tester, whatever you want to call it. This is the one I have from Snap-on. I use this all the time at work. But uh, essentially all it is, is you kind of hook it up to chassis ground here. And if you weren't aware, the negative side of the battery, the cable is, is bolted directly to the frame of the car. So you could hook this up, the end of this up, to anywhere that's bare metal that's bolted to the chassis of the car and it will complete the circuit and also really quick if you are unfamiliar and you do not diagnose cars professionally or as an advanced DIY or whatever it is be very very careful with test lights it's highly advised to use a DVOM like a digital multimeter to check for circuit or check circuits because this thing right here can and will blow fuses and fry ECUs if you do not use it properly. This thing is used for very, very basic circuit diagnosis. Um, you could check battery voltage to make sure, you know, that whatever that is, you could check it to like diagnose if your alternator is outputting voltage and basic fuse diagnosis. But you do not want to check complicated circuits because you will likely fry something you will blow fuses or brick computers or ecus so just be very very careful this circuit is not connected really to anything else it just you know power in and out it's it's not like a huge it's not like an ecu that directs power or anything so be very careful that's word of caution please 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 use these carefully for this instance though i do want to show you guys what i'm talking about so this thing is really cool because if you look, there's like a screen in there that will light up and show you the battery voltage or whatever the voltage is when you check a circuit. And if you check in here, like I am doing, you could see nothing is lighting up. I'm not getting power at all to this 12 volt socket down here. And I've already checked the one in the trunk. I know this car has other ones too, but um, I'm only really concerned right now with this one and the one in the trunk because these are the only two that I would consider hooking my vacuum pump up for the mufflers and so I just wanted to show you guys and kind of explain this tool and what I'm going to be doing so that way when you see it in the rest of the video when I'm checking fuses and whatnot you understand what's going on but uh let's dive into the glove box and check fuse number 54 I'll put a picture like a diagram up of the fuses or the fuse box in the glove box here so you get an idea for where I'm headed um my car uh has at least according to my fuse like little list i'll show you that too in a second has five fuses related to all of these i can only assume that that means that my car has five like 12 volt sockets i know there's one underneath the glove box there's one here in the armrest there's one in the trunk there's one uh in front of my 
right there in front of my shift lever. And I'm sure there's one like in the back that I'm not, uh, not paying attention to or whatever, but we're going to dive into the glove box. I'm going to remove fuse 54 and check it to see if it's blown and go on from there. Here we go. All right. So now we're in the glove box. I have my light lighting it up because it's not very bright down there. It's kind of hard for the camera to pick up. I have the car in accessory mode. Uh, you need it in accessory mode to make sure to check power. Power won't be coming in if it's not. And if you weren't aware, there's a fuse box behind this door in the glove box and there's one in the trunk. Um, both locations do have fuses for the 12 volt sockets, uh, at least in my case. But uh, we're going to start here because everyone on the internet was telling me that fuse number 54, which is behind here, is likely the cause. We're going to check it out and uh, go from there. So if you're unfamiliar, to take this out, all you got to do is lift this tab up, kind of pivot this door, and then kind of wiggle it and it will come out completely of the glove box. And if you look, I'm gonna zoom in real quick. This is the fuse box down here. And fuse number 54 is the second yellow fuse from the bottom right here, this 20 amp. It's not the bottom one, but the one up. And so you have two options. You can either take the fuse out and kind of check it, which is you know the easiest telltale to make sure that it is blown. Or I wanna show you guys with the test light what you can do. So if you look on either side of the numbers, there's like exposed metal right there. And the point is to be able to check that circuit to make sure you're getting power in one side and obviously out to the other side. And so I'm going to check this side first. And oh, look at that. It's lighting up. And I know you guys can't see that, but it's lighting up and telling me that I'm getting 11.9 volts to that side of the fuse. But if I check the other side of the fuse, nothing. I'm not getting anything at all which means this fuse is blown. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about and then replace it and see where we're at from there. Here we go. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the fuse. I have it out. So check this out. Let it focus. You see that? That fuse is blown. It is definitely not letting power go through there. And so now that I have it replaced, let's check this out also. So, I have the new fuse in, and I'm checking this side, just like before, still getting battery voltage. But now, if I go to the other side, over here, just like that, we're getting battery voltage again, which means I've now fixed this circuit, and now we can check to see if I'm getting power at this 12 volt socket. Let me just zoom out real quick, which takes forever on this camera. Come on. There we go. All right, let's see. Am I getting power here? Uh, nope, not getting power, which means there's something else going on too. So let me flip this around real quick. So we fixed one fuse and I told you my car has five fuses related to the 12 volt power or 12 volt uh, sockets. And so I'm gonna go pull out the, there's like a, a fuse list, like little paper, like sheet, that shows you all the fuse locations for what circuit. And I'm gonna show you guys that. And then we're just gonna go down the list and kind of check the rest of the fuses and see which one, if any, is the problem. So let's go, move to the trunk. All right, so if you open up your trunk on the right side here, is the other fuse box and if you're fortunate like i am you still have this little sheet right here which bmw so graciously stuffed at the bottom right there where you could barely get it out um but it is the and mine's all folded up but it's the fuse diagram if you could see that there so this the way it's oriented now would be the fuse box in the trunk, or I mean in the glove box, excuse me. And then this, if you look kind of how it's oriented, is this one here. And what you're looking for, if you flip this paper over, is this one right here is for all the 12 volt sockets, or all the 12 volt socket circuits or whatever. And if you can see, one, two, three, four, five, 
fuse 54, 65, 108, 147, and 176. Those are fuses for all the different 12 volt uh, power sockets. Um, and if you aren't aware, I mean, if you look at this logo right here, which is, you know, the one in the trunk, same logo as that. That's how I know that. So we fixed fuse 54. We're now gonna look at the rest of the fuses. Um, I have already kind of dug around a little bit and figured out that at least fuses 108, 147, and 176 are here at the trunk. These are all kind of like the, doesn't really signify anything, but just the, all the higher up fuses. So, you know, all the 100s or whatever, they're all here. So I'm gonna check these first while I'm here with the test light that I have hooked up to now this little latch, which is, you know, chassis ground, like I was saying. And we're just gonna run through the fuses and kind of see if I have power to both sides, which if I do, cool. If not, we'll replace it. So here we go. All right, so first on the list is 108. 108, if we flip it over, and we're kind of looking at it like this, right? 108 would be right here. I don't know if you can see that. 108. So it's oriented like this. So we got 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, obviously. So we're checking right here, 108, which is this five amp fuse. You can also double check that right here, fuse 108, or fuse 108, five amp. So if I go here with the car in accessory mode, we have battery voltage on that side, battery voltage on that side, which means this fuse is good. So we check that off. Um, it's a rinse and repeat. I'm not gonna go through the other two just because this clip would then be five minutes of me just poking things around, but you get the idea. I'm gonna check the other two and I'll let you guys know what I find. All right, so I just got done checking the other two fuses in the trunk, fuses 147 and 176. And both of, the, both of those fuses were good as well. So the only one left to check is fuse 65, which if I show you down here, fuse 65, again, this is the one in the glove box. So 54 was right here. 65, if you look, will be on the bottom. It's gonna be this one right here. So, you know, uh, three from the left or one, two, three, four from the right. So. Um, I'm gonna pull that one out because I've already kind of tried to um, Get my test light down there and just the the way it's angled without removing all of this stuff right here I'm not able to check both sides But I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna look at it and see if it is blown and if it is we'll replace it And then we'll you know at that point all five fuses for that whole entire circuit or circuits will have been good at this point and Hopefully we'll get power to these 12 volt sockets. So let's check it out all right you guys look at that good news this fuse was in fact blown kind of hard to see so hopefully this angle is kind of getting it but same thing as the 20 amp fuse before let me zoom out real quick and show you guys what we're working with now so now we'll go back into here cars in accessory mode kind of stick this down into the 12 volt and look at that battery voltage exactly how we want it which means now my valve muffler uh, vacuum pump should be working so let's kind of give a rundown of what we did real quick and I'll give you guys that so so we had two blown fuses we had the fuse number 54 in the glove box and fuse number 65 in the glove box the 54 was a 20 amp fuse and the fuse 65 was a smaller as you saw little 15 amp fuse but after both of those were replaced and the other fuses were checked and good um all of my 12 volt power sockets are working now which means we should be able to go back there and start flipping the valves off and on, assuming the valves even work, but uh, let's get back there and check them out, huh? Here we have.
have the valve mufflers I was telling you guys about. And if you look by this red light being on, the 12 volt power socket back here is working, obviously. And it powers this little vacuum pump down here. You can see with the green light on. And if you look with this little fob that comes in the kit, check this out. <laughs> This is so sick. Look at Oh, check out the other side. Dude, this thing works super good, you guys. One more time. On. Off. <laughs> These things work so good. And when I tell you guys that this, if you're looking for a valved muffler, uh option as opposed to going maybe name brand this is the route you're going to want to go please 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 check out um the videos that i have planned for this coming out in the near future next couple weeks or so i'm going to go over all the details what i paid where i got it and how you can get this whole setup for significantly cheaper than a name brand valved muffler setup so please consider subscribing and sticking around for that um now, I mean, you know, at this point, without getting into too much detail, I guess we can kind of wrap this up, can't we? <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to put these on the car, man. And that, with quad exhaust setup down here with the new diffuser. Dude, I am so stoked, you guys. Sheesh! <laughs> Alrighty, you guys. Um... I think that about wraps it up. Uh, I hope this was a fun one to watch. I know, you know, it's not quite as fun as like installing aftermarket parts or whatever, but I think there's a lot to be said about uh, having problems with your car and having the capabilities of fixing them yourself, whether it be to save money or just to know that you can do it or say that you did it. Either way, uh, this was a pretty easy one and hopefully this video will help someone in the future, whoever watches it with kind of getting a basic understanding for diagnosing just simple electrical circuits. But with that, um, as you saw, now that the valve mufflers work, you saw them flipping kind of open and closed. And I'm really, really, really excited to finally get those on the car. And uh, I really hope you guys stick with me for that. Um, please consider subscribing if you made it this far. It would mean the world. I'm really, really um, looking forward to what's coming next for this car. And I'm having a really uh, fun time filming all this stuff for you guys. And like the feedback has been awesome and just kind of seen the support so far with just like my tiny little channel. It's been really, really rad. So please subscribe, um, comment if you got any sort of value or you learned anything with this video or if you would have done it differently, like either way, comment, let me know down below and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.